Welcome back, uh, dear viewers, and you're still watching The Breakfast Show. And in the segment of our program, we will talk about the presidential initiative start or IBDA uh, that aims at uh, making a better uh, industrial uh, field here in Egypt and encouraging uh, investors. Uh, also, uh, uh, this uh, initiative also aims at decreasing uh, uh, exports, uh, imports, uh, and encouraging local industries. Today, we are joined by Dr. Yomna Hamaki, Professor of uh, Economics, uh, to tell us more about this. Good morning. Good morning. Shirin. So, uh, Dr. Yomne, can you tell us more about this initiative? Actually, we all know that, uh, you know, for all uh, and most uh, successful experiences uh, in development uh, like China, South Korea, uh, they referred on the industrial sector as yes. engine of growth. And this experience actually can be uh, uh, applied in Egypt and uh, uh, our industrial sector can be uh, uh, an engine of growth, taking into consideration that we have, as economists, we have the studies that proving uh, for all industrial areas, you are going to find uh, population in these areas, uh, you know, in less poverty, which means that industrial clusters and industrial zones can benefit to large extent finding opportunities of job for uh, you know, population living in this area, and from here it comes improving their quality of life and the standard of living. And this is essential nowadays for Egypt when we talk about uh, our problems uh, starting from lack of uh, foreign currencies and uh, 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 our deficit in the balance of trade, uh, referring mainly to importing all what we need uh, 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 of agricultural product as well as uh, food, for example, wheat and uh, oil uh, uh, for food. All this is, uh, you know, uh, giving pressure and, uh, you know, for our uh, potentiality to manage, you know, uh, our relations uh, with other countries. And from here it comes that we need to address uh, to how extent we can improve regarding the industrial sector specifically uh, that is uh, actually contributing to uh, GDP in Egypt by only 16%. There is a potentiality to increase this percentage towards 40 and 50%. If why uh, there is a potentiality is because we need more investment in, uh, in, in this sector, first of all. The second point, we need investment in order to enhance the local contents. Local contents for industrialization in Egypt should be built on visibility, which means that we have to produce what we can produce at Egypt with lesser cost to have the value chains that enable Egypt to export uh, you know, the products that we have actually comparative advantage. Mm. And our studies as economists proving that we have a comparative advantage in ready-made clothes, we have a comparative advantage in food industry, in leather product, in furniture. And, you know, nowadays we have the potentiality to have a comparative advantage in even electronic products. Why? Because we have some component of the, we have started in some, uh, you know, uh, parts of the value chain uh, of this product. We need transfer of technology and we need more uh, local contents for such industry so that we can, you know, gain more competitiveness in this uh, field and be able to export, uh, you know, and to be integrated in the uh, international value chain because uh, we all know that uh, when we refer to the most important traded goods in international trade, electronics and machines coming first. So uh, we have to build our comparative advantage and our competitiveness in this field. And this will enable us to reduce the size of importation that is uh, for us quite high and uh, represent a main reason for the deficit in our balance of trade. From here it comes the importance that uh, our industrial sector is, uh, you know, having very large potentialities in order to be expanded uh, in the way to help us to reduce importation and to enhance our 
uh, export uh, so that we have uh, in Egypt a goal of increasing our export nowadays from uh, 32 billion dollars into 100 billion dollars. This is a goal for the government uh, that we have to work all of us as government and civil society in order to achieve this goal and this goal is not a kid uh, far away from what we can do because the potentialities according to our studies as economists can prove that we can reach this figure actually in a very short period but we have uh, uh, to manage our resources efficiently enough in order to start you know uh, gaining momentum in the international trade uh, system which is nowadays actually um, we have such opportunity taking into consideration the russian ukrainian war and the very important geographic uh, position of egypt and we have uh, you know nowadays the uh, suez canal uh, uh, economic, in, zone? Yeah, uh, economic zone all this and uh, what we have done regarding you know infrastructure uh, you know this is quite important that nowadays we have uh, availability of uh, energy of all sources we have renewable as well as uh, uh, traditional uh, energy we have the nuclear uh, starting inshallah uh, uh, for mm. the coming years in Daba you know so we have nowadays we we have already built our uh, bases and uh, uh, requirement in order to take off for a better situation regarding a better role for the industrial sector uh, a start or initiative EBDA is uh, an initiative by uh, president, our president, uh, with a uh, decent life, uh, which is we all know about decent life. Uh, it's a project aiming to improve the quality of life for the majority of Egyptians. Mm. And uh, actually this initiative is aiming to, as a catalyst, to just uh, make a kind of harmonization among uh, the institutions working in mm. the industrial field so that to uh, you know uh, figure out what are the opportunities regarding mega project and feeding industries as well as uh, regarding you know uh, insolvency um, uh, projects uh, that uh, have been affected by COVID and after that Russian Ukrainian war uh, to support them so they, they can start uh, restart their business and the third part of their initiative uh, is to uh, support uh, SMEs uh, in order to uh, gain more momentum for uh, supporting and uh, supporting generation of GDP and uh, enhancing uh, export for Egypt. So I believe that uh, this initiative uh, can play a significant role as a catalyst, but mm. it's not going to replace the institutions, yes. uh, you know, that are responsible for. It. Yes. yes. So, uh, also the state has recently launched uh, the golden license to encourage uh, the industrial sector. What is uh, meant by the golden license? Uh, what is uh, the difference between it and the one-stop shop? Actually, we have attended uh, the economic conference uh, for three days. Uh, yes. We have been talking about... You participated the in the conference? Yes, yes. yes. Uh, you know, we have been talking about what are, you know, the main challenges confronting mm. the industrial sector. Uh, you know, businessmen, uh, they, they talked about what are their problems, the obstacles. And, you know, all these discussions proved that still we have problem in our administrative, mm. you know, body, you yes. know, still we have bureaucracy, we have corruption. Mm. And, uh, uh, you know, we kept saying that several times that, uh, you know, without uh, the reform of the administrative mm. uh, body in Egypt, you cannot proceed in order to achieve and to benefit from our resources mm. uh, properly enough. And from here it comes that, uh, you know, uh, uh, the idea of a golden license uh, uh, is coming to solve such problems because in order to start your business, you have to go taking the approval of several, you know, yes. ministers and yes. institutions yes. and so on. You know, uh, uh, it has time. been counted as more than 25, you know, uh, parts mm. uh, to, to, to take your approval. So, uh, you know, investors, they are, uh, uh, you know, taking money and uh, time and uh, 
efforts in order to get the, their licenses to start their business and they are exhausted actually mm. to uh, take such a time. And from here it comes that the idea of uh, golden license, it's when you take your uh, approval from one, um, uh, one uh, like window, you can yes. say it, uh, you, you, you can, uh, by this Encourage approval, you can start immediately your work, which mm. means that uh, other parts are going to be taken gradually, but uh, the idea behind it is that you can start immediately. Mm. Uh, uh, previous uh, situations that you have to start taking all the approval of the 25 or 27 areas mm. uh, in order to start. So sometimes, uh, you know, uh, these investors they are taking w uh, one year and and more to start the business yes and this is actually lost of time mm. and money and uh, from here it comes that nowadays they can start immediately and after that they can take uh, uh, in a gradual manner you know all the other approval for the other uh, parts uh, 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 for the, the government and from here it comes that this can be regarded as uh, uh, a facility uh, in order to enhance the climate of investment for mm. investors and what had been declared by our president lately a few days ago mm. that uh, this golden uh, license, license is going to be uh, used for three months, uh, for the coming three months, for all mm. those who are going to, uh, you know, start uh, ask business. and start their business uh, uh, for the related coming to industry only. To the related to industry, yes. So, uh, also, uh, will the new fiscal and monetary policies uh, affect positively the promotion of industry in Egypt, or do we need, need to make uh, uh, different policies? Yes, of course, you know. You know, first of all, uh, the first question, you know, because I have been working on that for more than 20 years, mm. studies and uh, uh, during my, uh, you know, uh, uh, participation in Shura Council. Yes. You know, the problem is that we don't have a vision for our industrial sector, what we, what we need to do. Uh, for all countries that uh, started, uh, you know, decades ago, industrialization, you know, they started by having a visionary approach. We have a plan and strategic plan, but, you know, it's not concentrating on what we have to start with, mm. you know, because we cannot start on all industries at you know, when, we, when you, you want to develop your industrial sector, you cannot start by developing all types of industries. No successful strategy achieves that, which means that you have to specify which, sect, which, which industries you have to start concentrating on, mm. and other industries you have to, they, we should have a plan for other industries, but uh, gradually, you have to mention which industries you have a comparative advantage, so you can start boosting such industries by uh, uh, policies like uh, fiscal policies, tax exemption, uh, uh, you know, facilities, incentives, and so on, so that you can encourage producers to enhance their production and to improve their competitiveness so that they can increase the size of export. And this should be done not only for large factories, because this is our problem in Egypt. We always put our strategy for exportation in cooperation with large industries, only mm. neglecting completely middle and small industries. And this cannot achieve your goal at all, because you cannot achieve such export-oriented economy with only large producers. You have to, you know, uh, uh, generalize the system of incentive and uh, study all the obstacles confronting small and medium industries because you are going to have a value chain here, you know. Some feeding industries are going to support uh, large industries as well as you may have some small industries that they have capacity to export but they don't have a capacity for penetrating international market mm. and finding who is going to support them regarding upgrading you know uh, the competitiveness of their products and from here it comes that you have to study all that 
to be on the ground. It's not just by being in your office, uh, putting strategies, very nice strategies uh, on paper without being able to implement it in, uh, you know, in the ground. Mm. This is what we need to do, to go in the ground to see the capacity of all our industry all around geographic areas in Egypt and then to, to find, uh, uh, you know, action plan so that you can activate and support such small industries in you have to start with specific industries, like what I am telling you. I'm not telling you this uh, just uh, uh, by nature, but we have our studies as economists that we can, like, for example, for ready-made clauses, we can e uh, increase our export from $2 billion today into $30 billion. In from 2 to yes. 30. Mm -hmm. Imagine to how extent you two can do 30, it yes. in a very short period, because you have the capacity, you what the you need is good yeah. management yes. and a system of incentives so that you can you know use your resources in a better way and efficiently mm. enough uh, like uh, increasing productivity of labor like um, enhancing technology for some small industries like uh, find uh, you know some companies for for multinational buying groups if you refer to multinational buying groups in ready-made yes. clauses this is uh, this is the main uh, you know reason of the successful experiences for most uh, uh, southeast asian countries yes. and this is you know this can is be my done in question in to you yes. how can we can encourage international companies to come and open factories here in egypt you know it's a matter of environment Mm. You know, because we have been talking to a lot of uh, international, international investors in Asia for the last period, uh, the problems are quite clear and well known, mm. you know, regarding but they can changing, be changing mm. procedures all the time. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, they would like to have all international investors, they would like to have stabilization in the uh, you know environment for investment mm. if you put your policies you have to stay for such a period so that we can uh, this is the stabilization of the system uh, not every two or three months you are changing the procedures yes. of customs you are mm. changing the procedure of taxation so these investors they are taking a long time to adapt to the new procedures mm. and from here it comes that this is burdensome for them and increasing the cost of production. And this is actually, I believe that uh, all these problems have been discussed in uh, uh, the economic conference that have been, uh, yes. yes, all these problems. Uh, we have uh, talked very frankly uh, regarding what are the obstacles, what, how, we can, uh, how we can address it properly. And actually, from my point of view, what we need urgently is a system of monitoring and evaluation, mm. which means that in order to reach uh, all the objectives we, I am talking about nowadays, mm. like, inc like increasing the size of export from, uh, uh, like if we take increasing export of ready-made clauses from uh, uh, $2 billion into $30 billion, who is going to do that? which factories, what is the role of multinationals, uh, you know, and the roles and responsibilities of all the institutions working in that. And then f if we can uh, do it, we can monitor uh, on a time schedule uh, who is doing what, uh, they are doing it uh, properly enough or not to reach the goals we need to do. I, I believe this is the only way to uh, what we can call results-based management mm. so that you can arrive, uh, achieve what we are looking for and what we deserve actually yes. because uh, we have a lot of resources and it needs uh, to be activated. So um, uh, as one of the participants in the economic conference, can you tell us uh, more about uh, the recommendations that were adopted yes, by the end of the uh, conference? You know, uh, the most important recommendations were uh, referred to how to activate, you know, uh, economic performance in general, How, yeah, in general and uh, to address the main obstacles and in this time actually the main obstacle was 
regarding exchange rate policy. Yes. And you know, you, you, you can see that after that, two days after the conference, uh, Egypt started to liberalize. float yes. and liberalize uh, the it exchange rate. Mm. And uh, because this is, you know, um, uh, we had a lot of problems regarding that and our factories were paralyzed by not being able to import uh, what they need for uh, Production. So this is an important decision? Yes, it was quite important decision uh, and uh, actually what we need to do is that for this is first of all regarding economic policies. Yes. Uh, what economic policies should be taken and how to improve the quality of services mm. from uh, the government institutions to support investors. Yes. And uh, the idea of uh, golden license mm. appeared and uh, uh, besides what, which industries we need to uh, support for the coming period so that they can activate enhancing our inflows of, uh, of foreign currencies. So we have, we have discussed all this matter uh, regarding fiscal policies, what are the problems uh, confronting investors uh, in customs, for example, still uh, according to doing business and competitiveness index, we have uh, challenges regarding our customs. Despite that, we are going to mechanize such a system. So hopefully by, uh, you know, uh, this, uh, uh, you know, uh, mechanization, we can achieve a better performance regarding a better service for, uh, you know, investors so that they can have their importation in a, a good and less time and so less cost. So this was a, a, a An significant... It will help the Egyptian economy, but on the long run. No, on not the long, long run. Term. Actually, all this immediately. It should be, you mm. know, we don't have we don't have the you know, leisure of the uh, long time or yes. even the medium long term. term. We have to work uh, now, mm. you know, because it's actually uh, it's a chance from one perspective because, uh, you know. What you, what you can see on the international level and the regional level, you have a very good opportunity. So if you don't catch such opportunity immediately, yes. you are going to lose it. Uh, and from here it comes that you have to work immediately to enhance your uh, you know, investment, uh, climate of investment, so that to attract foreign investors from one perspective and to support your investors uh, either they are large or medium or uh, small to activate their efforts so that they can produce and enhance uh, GDP growth. So these are uh, potentialities that uh, should be used immediate, uh, immediately and the conference has specified what, what are the actions that should be taken regarding customs, regarding taxes, regarding bureaucracy. procedures mm -hmm. and how to address the bureaucracy and you know regarding the uh, managerial system generally speaking we need to upgrade the skills there, we, we need to combat uh, uh, corruption in the uh, you know administrative uh, system we need to enhance uh, the you know uh, skills of labor because still mm. this is a major challenge confronting mm. industrialization yes. so it needs from us to upgrade and actually we have this potentiality because Egypt is full of training centers but unfortunately, we are not using these training centers properly enough. Mm. So nowadays, we have a strategic plan in order to direct use and to attract use instead of going to Tok Tok and uh, yes. these, uh, you know, mm. activities that are taking them into wrong, quite wrong way yes. of life, to attract them to start, uh, you know, upgrading the skills, to find uh, a decent opportunity of job so that they can change, actually, not only only their life, but the life of their families too. Yes. Finally, I'd like to thank you, Dr. Rumna Hamaki, Professor of Economics and Shams University. Thank you for being with You're us welcome. today. And uh, dear viewers, a uh, short break, and we'll be back with our second segment for today, so stay tuned.